Welcome back to the course on foundation engineering. In our last class, we started talking about how to estimate the lateral load capacity of the piles. So where we have seen uh, certain cases, like uh, in the case of your uh, short free-headed pile embedded in clay and long free-headed pile embedded in clay, we have seen how to estimate your lateral load capacity of the piles. So in today's class, we'll try to see the other cases in a broader way uh, and understand how the earth pressure uh, lateral uh, pressure which is uh, offered by the soil on your pile against the moment what is expected to happen in the pile because of the lateral load what it is subjected to so now uh, let us take up the other case that's your uh, let's say we are looking at the other case that is your short fixed head pile so in the case of short fixed head pile how we are going to have our uh, earth pressure distribution diagram if we understand then uh, from that earth pressure distribution diagram we can try to uh, apply your equilibrium condition net summation of force in horizontal direction equal to zero and accordingly we can try to find out what is your ultimate lateral load that your pile can resist before it is said to be undergoing the failure okay let's say this is my uh, pile head into which your uh, pile is embedded into it's a fixer kind of support connectivity what your pile head has uh, where uh, the pile head is embedded into your pile cap okay so if this is the pile in which you are looking at your lateral load carrying capacity so i'm going to be talking about how much is going to be this ultimate lateral load capacity of this particular short pile okay let's say this is my uh, ground surface this is the ground Now I want to understand what is this HU value. Now if I'm looking at how your uh, short fixed head pile is going to get displaced, as we said in the case of your uh, fixed head pile, most commonly what you will be seeing is the translation uh, what your pile will be subjected to. But however, in the case of your long fixed head piles, though the pile tries to get translated, but because of what is called as the failure in the pile material, that's nothing but about some particular point along the length of the pile, you are going to see a plastic hinge formation taking place because of which about that plastic hinge, the rotation is going to be happening in the uh, top portion of your pile about the plastic hinge formation. That is in the case of your long fixed head pile. But what we are looking at here is a short fixed head pile. So if I just want to plot how your display shape of this uh, short fixed head pile is going to be there, as we said, your uh, pile would have what is called as a translation uh, displacement taking place in the case of your fixed head uh, piles. Okay, this is how your pile will be getting translated because of the lateral load what it is subjected to. Now, uh, in this particular case, if I am just trying to look at how your earth pressure distribution diagram is going to be along the depth of the pile. So, as we have understood, yes, at this position, you have your HU force which is acting on uh, the so called uh, pile cap which is in turn getting transferred onto your pile head. Okay. So according to Broom, we have understood over a depth of 1.5 times that of the diameter of the pile, you are uh, neglecting the effect of your earth pressure, what is transferred from the adjacent soil onto your pile. And beyond that particular depth till the complete depth of your pile, because the complete uh, remaining portion of the pile is getting translated in the forward direction. So this is how your earth pressure distribution diagram is going to be and the magnitude of that earth pressure is nothing but it is equal to 9 Cu. So with this, yeah, I can simply apply my net summation of force in a horizontal direction equal to 0 and by applying net summation of force in horizontal direction equal to 0, I can go on to uh, calculate how much is going to be a HU. So if I just want to calculate this length of the pile is nothing but we write it as L. So therefore, uh, HU is what I can write it as uh, 9 Cu is the pressure into the area over which that particular pressure is being exerted by the soil on the pile cross section. So that's nothing but over uh, the length of that pressure distribution diagram, the depth of that pressure distribution diagram, which is nothing but L minus 1.5 times D into D. Over that projected width, that's nothing but the diameter of your uh, pile, your earth pressure is getting uh, exerted by the soil on your uh, pile. Okay. So from this particular expression, I can uh, simply calculate how much is your uh, ultimate uh, lateral uh, load carrying capacity of that particular short fixed head pile. So in the similar way, in the case of your uh, long fixed head 
file if we are looking at how your uh, at pressure distribution diagram is going to be and uh, from which you are going to be calculating the so called hu value this is my long fixed head pile which i am trying to talk about so as we have said in the case of long piles you are going to see what is called as a plastic hinge formation happening about some particular uh, depth in the pile due to which the failure is happening in the pile so if i just roughly plot how the display shape of the pile is going to be so you see that a plastic hinge formation getting developed about that uh, hinge and the remaining portion of the length of the pile be, uh, below that plastic hinge what got formed is going to be uh, as it is in the vertical direction and your pile cap might get displaced something like this okay so because of this if i am just trying to understand how your air pressure distribution diagram is going to be looking like okay over the length of the pile so what we see is that this is some particular depth about which your plastic hinge formation took place beyond this depth there is no rotation or no translation happening in your uh, portion of the pile so it means that your pile is not trying to move away from its position in any direction so obviously that there will not be any reaction offered by the uh, soil material on the pile surface so only reaction is going to be seen offered by the soil material on the portion of the pile existing over a depth of what is called as z below the ground surface if i consider this to be my ground So, how your air pressure distribution diagram is going to be? At this level, you have what is called as your HU force, which is indicated. And uh, over a depth of 1.5 times D, you don't have any air pressure distribution diagram considered, according to Broom, in the case of piles embedded in clay, whether it could be short pile or long pile uh, with free head or uh, fixed head. So, my air pressure distribution diagram is going to be like this. So this is nothing but it is equal to 9 cu so now you can apply your net summation of force in x direction equal to zero and accordingly you can write down the expression for your hu to determine what is the value of your hu in the case of long fixed head pile. but one thing what you need to know is at the fixed end support okay so at the fixed end support you are also going to come across with some net movement that is going uh, that we are going to be coming across with because at the fixed support you will be coming across with some movement also okay so you would also see some moment existing, which I can write it as, let's say, MU is some moment about that fixed end support. Even in the previous case also, you would come across with that moment also. That's nothing but MU. So that's how we'll be uh, able to try and find out uh, the lateral load capacity of that long um, fixed head file embedded in clay. Next, let's look at some other particular cases, what we have uh, earlier not touched upon uh, whatever cases that we have talked about earlier are for uh, piles embedded in clay whether it is short or long pile with free head or fixed head now let's try to see for uh, piles embedded in sand which is either a short pile or a long pile with free head or fixed head short free head pile in sand so all those cases what we are now going to be talking about are the piles which are embedded in uh, sands so in that particular case if the short free head pile is what i am trying to look at okay let's say this is my uh, short pile if this is my ground i am calling it as a free head so at that free head you have what is called as your hu force acting which has got some eccentricity with respect to the ground the load is acting at some eccentricity distance which is e with respect to the ground position now what is going to be uh, the display shape of your pile because of that lateral load what was getting applied about some particular point you are going to see a kind of a rotation that is going to be happening in your pile like this okay this is something like your uh, distorted shape the rotated uh, rotated shape uh, or display shape of your uh, pile about some particular uh, depth let's say about some depth z you are going to see that rotation happening in that particular uh, portion of the pipe. So with this uh, understanding, what is now we understand is uh, the soil which is on to the right side of your pile. According to me, the right side means this portion. Okay, The soil which is there in this region is going to offer you the pressure on the pile towards the left. Whereas uh, the remaining length of the pile, what is happening is as it is getting rotated, uh, the bottom portion of the pile as it is getting rotated towards the left. 
uh, into this portion of the soil, the pile is getting uh, pushed, pushed towards the soil. It means that the state at which the soil is existing there is in passive state. Even in the top portion also, the pile is getting pushed towards the soil, rotated towards the soil in the sense your uh, soil there, what is existing is going to be in uh, passive state and the corresponding pressure exerted by the soil will also be in terms of the passive earth pressure. Okay. So, with this basic understanding, if I go on to draw how your earth pressure distribution diagram is going to be with respect to the ground over the length of the pile, if I am just trying to plot how your earth pressure distribution diagram is going to be. Okay. So, my earth pressure distribution uh, at the ground surface, it is going to be 0 and till this depth z, the soil on uh, the right side of the pile is going to be exerting the pressure on the pile towards the left and the portion of the pile which is getting rotated towards the left the soil in that region it is going to offer you the reaction in the uh, right side direction as it is a soil so with depth your vertical stresses uh, as it is a sandy soil we are going to talk in terms of your uh, vertical stress your air pressure is going to be calculated in terms of your vertical stress not just in terms of your cohesion value so vertical stress which increases with the depth so that's the reason why your air pressure distribution diagram is going to be like this so at the depth z this depth is z and this remaining depth is l minus z okay so at the depth z how much is going to be your uh, intensity of earth pressure means it is what we are going to be getting it as three times that of your kp into gamma into z so kp here refers to that of your um, passive earth pressure okay now once the direction of the rotation is getting changed the direction of your earth pressure what is represented is getting changed intensity of the earth pressure is going to be same but the direction in which that intensity is represented is getting changed beyond that depth z and it reaches to a maximum value which is equal to 3 into kp into gamma into l because the depth at which you are looking at is at the bottom of the pile where the length of that pile is nothing but z is equal to l so that's how you plot your earth pressure distribution diagram and from that earth pressure distribution diagram you can go on to write down what is your uh, net summation of force in x direction equal to zero assuming rightward forces to be positive and net summation of moments about any particular point you can equate it to zero maybe considering your anti-clockwise moments to be uh, positive so with this sign convention i can write down your two equations and from those two equations i can find out your uh, so-called unknown what we are going to be looking at that unknown what i am interested in looking at is your hu value so when the force is getting transferred from one point to the other point you also additionally come across with what is called as a moment of couple about that particular point okay so the magnitude of this moment of couple is nothing but hu into e that's how you go on to calculate okay so next other cases like uh, it could be your long prehead pile still we are talking about uh, the piles which are embedded in sand so if that is the case, once again, it's a long pile, what we are talking about, which has got a free head. This might be your, uh, this is what I can consider as your ground. So on top of your pile head, you have your HU force acting, which has got some eccentricity with respect to the ground position, which is E. Okay. So now what happens to your uh, rotated uh, position of your pile? So about some particular point, as it is a long pile, about some particular depth position of your pile, you are going to see a plastic hinge formation happening. This depth is what we consider as the length of the pile. That's nothing but the portion of the pile which got embedded into the ground. That's what we call it as your length of the pile. So what becomes your uh, display shape of the pile? The top portion of the pile above the plastic hinge which got formed gets rotated like this. And the portion of the pile which is there below your plastic hinge will remain it in its own position at stationary condition. Okay. This is a point of uh, plastic hinge formation. Point of plastic hinge. So about that plastic hinge, rotation is getting developed. Or, uh, you are going to see a free rotation happening in uh, the top portion of the pile because of that lateral load, what it is subjected to. Once the pile material has undergone the failure. So with this case, if I just go on to uh, plot your uh, at pressure distribution diagram, over the length of the pile if i am looking at okay 
So beyond this plastic hinge formation point, you don't see any earth pressure distribution diagram in the rest portion of the pile length. Only in this region of the pile, you are going to see earth pressure distribution diagram that you are going to be coming across with. Okay. So if I say about some depth Z, we are going to come across with some plastic hinge which is getting formed there. So my uh, this horizontal stress, that's nothing but which we are calling it as here, earth pressure. So how much is going to be that value is what I can write it at the bottom and bottom in the sense at that depth Z is equal to the horizontal earth pressure. What I am going to be getting is 3P into gamma into Z. So accordingly, we are going to be calculating. And in this case, if I just want to write down what is my uh, ultimate uh, lateral load capacity of that particular pile. So it's nothing but simply your earth pressure distribution diagram. That's it. Area of that earth pressure distribution diagram. Intensity of the earth pressure, you know, on what particular area it is getting projected is what we'll be uh, simply calculating. It's a triangular distribution. So area is half into the base of that, which is nothing but the magnitude of that earth pressure, 3 into Kp into gamma into Z. Over what depth it is acting? Over a depth Z. And this particular pressure is getting exerted over the width of that particular uh, pile cross section. That's nothing but the diameter of the pipe. So that's how we'll be simply able to write down your uh, expression for uh, finding out the horizontal uh, maximum lateral load what your pile can be subjected to before it is said to be undergoing the failure. Okay, this is the point where you have your HU force. So if you are transferring it to the ground surface, so along with that HU force, you are also coming across with certain moment of couple what you are supposed to be representing. And the other cases, similarly, short fixed head pile embedded in sand again. Okay, so if it is a case of your short fixed head pile embedded in sand, so this is my fixed connectivity into which your pile is embedded into. Okay, this is my ground. You are representing that there is some HU force which is getting applied on that particular pile cap, which is in turn getting transferred onto your pile head, which is embedded into that pile cap. So, what will be the display shape of this particular pile? As it is said, a short fixed head pile. So, the pile would certainly undergo what is called as a translation. So, dotted line indicates the display shape of that particular pile position. Now, because of this displaced condition, if I just want to understand how your earth pressure distribution diagram is going to be over the length of that pile, we would see that the earth pressure distribution diagram is going to be linearly increasing till the complete depth of your uh, pile. So what will be your uh, intensity of this earth pressure over that length of your uh, pile? So it comes out to be 3 into Kp into gamma into L. Okay. So here you have your HU force. And uh, fixed end support, if you are replacing that fixed end support, you also come across with a moment which is indicated as MU. So that's how now here also you can go on to apply your net summation of force in x direction equal to zero and net summation of moments about any particular point equal to zero. And then uh, you can try to find out uh, here in this particular case, if you can simply apply this equilibrium condition, that should be sufficient enough in getting your unknown. HU because uh, moment equilibrium condition is not required uh, here in this particular case because you are uh, you are not talking anything about your uh, um, value Z at any particular depth. So the other case what uh, we have not looked at is your long fixed head pile which is embedded in uh, sand. This is the last case what we were supposed to be referring to. So this is my long pile, what I am looking at. This is a fixed connectivity, what we have got, where uh, the pile head is fixed into that uh, pile cap. So this is a position of the ground, which is sub a pile cap is subjected to a horizontal loading HU. Because of this, what we are going to see in the case of long pile, as more and more load uh, is getting transferred onto your pile uh, head, what we would see is that the complete length of the pile tries to translate as it is a fixed support connectivity. So complete pile tries to translate, but as it cannot uh, completely get translated about some particular uh, depth position of the pile, we are going to see what is called as a plastic, which, uh, plastic hinge which gets formed 
okay so we would come across with some plastic hinge like this and because of which the pile cap uh, would start getting shifted uh, something like this and whereas the remaining length of the pile would uh, stay at its own original position in stationary condition this is your uh, uh, point of uh, plastic hinge now in this case if i am just trying to look at how your earth pressure distribution diagram is going to be over the length of the pile so only till this particular depth of point of rotation you would see your earth pressure distribution is continuously increasing okay hit you and due to the fixed support a moment what is to be indicated as a reaction at the due to that fixed support and this depth is uh, some depth z about which your plastic hinge formation got developed and the intensity of this pressure maximum is nothing but 3 into kp into gamma into z beyond that depth of z you don't see any pressure uh, getting transferred onto the portion of the pile because that remaining length of the pile is not getting translated nor getting rotated towards any side of that uh, soil medium so because of which uh, you don't come across with any reaction offered by the soil on the pile surface additional pressure is not getting transferred so uh, with that uh, once you know your uh, pressure distribution diagram you can talk about your corresponding force equilibrium condition required force equilibrium condition and moment equilibrium condition to find out your uh, so called hu unknown force um, which is we are calling it as your uh, ultimate lateral load carrying capacity of that particular long fixed head pile which is embedded in clay or which is embedded in sand so with different conditions that is free hand condition or fixed head condition uh, whether your pile is short or whether your pile is long whether it is embedded in clay whether it is embedded in sand we have roughly seen how to estimate your lateral load carrying capacity of that particular pile but however we are not going to be uh, in general we are not going to be talking about the analysis of the piles by looking at this simple earth pressure distribution diagram rather what we try to do is we consider these piles I repeat we consider these piles whatever we are talking about the piles which are subjected to lateral loads we said the behavior of the pile is as similar to that of the behavior of a beam so we go back to the consideration of uh, long continuous footings which are assumed to be as uh, beams resting on uh, elastic springs so in the same way here also we try to analyze the behavior of the pile as similar to that of the behavior of your uh, beam so we we try to write down your uh, bending equation from that bending equation you can write down the equation for uh, shear force or you can write down the equation for your uh, deflection okay so whatever you want to write down you can write down that based on that uh, bending equation only okay so that is in terms of the analysis of your uh, piles which are subjected to your lateral loading we are not going into the much details of that how we are going to be analyzing it and so on but in general if you are required to analyze your uh, pile which is subjected to your lateral load so that's the procedure what we are going to be following okay pile is going to be treated as your beam and uh, lateral load what uh, your pile is subjected to is considered as a transverse loading on the beam because of the transverse loading getting transferred onto your uh, beam how much is going to be your bending moment getting developed in the beam how much shear forces are getting developed in the beam how much uh, deflections are uh, happening in that particular beam when i say beam here it is nothing but your pile so that's all we are going to be analyzing and that's how we analyze the cases of your uh, piles which are uh, subjected to your lateral loads so having seen uh, geotechnically or uh, theoretically how to estimate your uh, lateral load capacity of the pile let's also have an insight into how uh, we are going to be talking about uh, the estimation of the lateral load capacity of your uh, pile from your uh, pile load test okay so as we have seen in the previous case earlier we have talked about already what is meant by pile load test there we said we are going to be constructing a pile in the field and that pile is going to be subjected to what is called as your uh, vertical compressive loading or it could be vertical tensile loading depending on the uh, condition what you are looking at for which which particular case you are trying to estimate your ultimate load carrying capacity of the pile whether it is for your compressive loading whether it is for your uplift loading in the same way we are going to be constructing your pile in the original construction site and that pile is going to be subjected to 
a lateral load and due to that lateral load what you are applying on the pile with the help of hydraulic jack system and so on okay so we try to uh, apply uh, what is called as uh, lateral loading on that pile due to that lateral load what you are trying to apply on the pile we'll see how the displacement deflection is happening in the pile how the pile head is getting displaced from its position because of that load versus deflection or the displacement what is happening in the pile in the lateral direction we are going to be plotting a graph between load versus displacement curve of that lateral loaded pile so from that load versus displacement curve what can i try to determine i can try to determine what is called as your horizontal modulus of subgrade reaction or uh, simply uh, modulus of subgrade reaction in the horizontal direction because why i am talking about in the horizontal direction because the loading on that pile material is in the horizontal direction because of which the deflection or the displacement is happening in the pile in the horizontal direction so the response of the soil which is adjacent to the pile in the lateral direction that is in the horizontal direction is only being uh, what we are uh, trying to understand so soil in the lateral direction is getting displaced because of the displacement in the pile so the subsequent modulus of subgrade reaction what we get from the load versus settlement curve from this uh, lateral pile load test is nothing but we call it as your horizontal modulus of subgrade reaction so the test wise test procedure everything is same as that of whatever the previous discussion that we had in the case of your compressive loading but there the compressive loading what was getting applied because of your hydraulic jack which is placed in the vertical direction with a reaction frame in the horizontal uh, plane but here uh, your uh, subsequent uh, hydraulic jack is placed in the horizontal direction in turn to transfer your reaction or the action of the load onto your uh, pile head in the lateral direction that in the horizontal direction these are nothing but your uh, hydraulic jacks which are placed in the lateral direction or horizontal direction so by operating this horizontal uh, uh, hydraulic jacks you are trying to transfer what is called as your lateral loading on your uh, pile head this is your pile head so on top of uh, on that pile head you are trying to apply what is called as a lateral loading because of that applied lateral load you are going to be measuring with the help of your dial gauges you can see some dial gauges which are connected here so by fixing that dial gauges you are able to measure how much is the amount of deflection that your pile is undergoing due to the applied lateral load so load versus settlement curve you will be plotting and from that load versus settlement curve you can try to identify what is the maximum lateral load at which the failure, failure uh, has taken place in that particular pile so from that uh, uh, ultimate lateral load uh, what you are trying to get from that curve you can try to go on to find out with a factor of safety you can try to find out what could be the allowable load or the safe load that can be applied on the pile in the lateral direction um, in working condition so uh, this lateral load uh, capacity estimation uh, from your field test can be done in various ways sometimes you can have uh, a dead a dead weights which are placed something like this to offer you what is called as a reaction which acts like a reaction frame and uh, hydraulic jack is helpful for us in transferring that reaction through that dead weights onto your uh, pile head so sometimes you'll have your uh, reaction frame uh, in this way okay so here in this particular case you have a test setup where uh, the pile is not just subjected to only lateral load your pile can also be simultaneously subjected to what is called as your vertical loading because you may not come across with a pile which is only subjected to a lateral load or which is only subjected to your compressive loading and so on there could be some particular uh, cases where you will simultaneously come across with what is called as a lateral loading and your compressive loading what your pile is subjected to in such particular case you can have a kind of test setup as shown in this particular uh, figure here so you have a load transfer mechanism happening in the horizontal direction on your pile head and you have a load transfer mechanism happening in the vertical direction on your uh, pile head so both your pile is subjected to a lateral load and uh, vertical loading because of that uh, both lateral and vertical loading what your pile is getting subjected to we are trying to understand how the failure is getting initiated in that particular pile and accordingly we are going to estimate what is your ultimate load carrying capacity of that particular pile when simultaneously subjected to what is called as lateral and vertical loading and this is another particular uh, case which is an example for uh, lateral loading testing condition of your uh, pile okay where this is your pile okay so this is our pile what we are uh, looking at this is your reaction frame okay so this is your pile which is subjected to the lateral load and uh, based on that we will be trying to estimate 
how much is going to be the lateral load carrying capacity of that pipe. So these are uh, some other tests. Okay. So this is your uh, test pile. These are your guide piles. And uh, this is another uh, case of test setup. Uh, these are all different uh, types of test setups what we are talking about. Always uh, you may not have a single type of uh, test setup or an approach for estimating what is required for performing the tests in the field. So it depends on how your machinery is available, how your conditions are existing in that particular field based on which you are going to be talking about how your uh, field test is going to be conducted to estimate your pile load capacity, whether it is subjected to compressive loading or maybe subjected to tensile loading or maybe subjected to your lateral loading. Test procedure wise, more or less it remains the same, only that direction in which the load is getting transferred onto the pile would get changed depending on the requirement of that particular pile load test what you are talking about. The next topic and the last topic of this particular unit is what is pile integrity test. Okay, so as the name itself says, integrity is nothing but about understanding the internal condition of that particular uh, pile, what is prefabricated or what is uh, constructed by making a borehole uh, into the ground. Okay, so this pile integrity test is basically said to be a non destructive testing. What is this word non destructive means? We are not trying to cause any kind of failure in the pile. Without causing any kind of failure in the pile, we are trying to understand the condition of the pile. So whether that pile, what we have constructed there, is it in a proper condition? Whether it has got any cracks in the process of construction? Whether it has got any honeycomb formations in the process of construction? So whether the strength of that concrete material by which it is constructed, whether the strength of the concrete is consistent or not throughout the length of the pile at different positions of the pile, whether the strength of the concrete is uh, consistent or not. So all those aspects we'll be trying to figure out and understand from this pile integrity test. Whereas your pile load test, what we have talked about earlier, okay, whether subjected to compression or whether subjected to tension or whether subjected to lateral loading, they are all what we call it as destructive loading tests. Why, why we call them as destructive tests? Because you are trying to cause the failure in the pile to understand its behavior under the uh, loads what it is subjected to. But whereas this particular test is what we call it as your non-destructive testing. Why do we call it as non-destructive testing means we are not going to be applying any loads on this particular pile to cause the failure in it. Okay, so that's the reason we call it as a non-destructive testing. So pile integrity test, it is a non-destructive non testing. Uh, what we are going to be talking in the case of your deep foundations, which are uh, either your driven piles or your agard, agard nothing but board piles. So in the case of your driven piles or in the case of your board piles, uh, what is constructed, Okay, you are going to be performing this test to understand the integrity of that file, uh, that particular file. So it is in general, what we come across with regard to pile integrity test is we said we'll have what is called as your uh, high strain method or low strain method. So most commonly what we come across uh, to exactly understand uh, the integrity condition of the pile. So we are going to be depending on what is called as a low strain method for integrity testing of your driven piles or drill shafts or your board piles or whatever they are. The test is useful to find out the structural soundness of your uh, pile. Structural soundness in the sense whether uh, you have any honeycomb formation happening in the construction of the pile, large white spaces, whether they were developed in the construction of the pile because of the improper compaction what you have done for your concrete. Whether the compressive strength, whatever you are supposed to achieve for your concrete is properly achieved or not. Whether the consistency of the concrete, the consistency at which the concrete is placed over the complete uh, length of the pile, whether it is properly done or not. So all that we'll be able to understand from this integrity test. So we are able to find out the structural soundness, soundness in the sense, how is the condition of the pile, okay, at different places uh, over the uh, length of the pile. In some situation, it can also be used. It in the sense, the uh, pile integrity test can also be used to determine unknown lengths of your existing deep foundation. So sometimes what happens is that uh, some earlier contractor, uh, contractor has constructed your uh, piles in that particular uh, field. And uh, because of various reasons, the contractor got changed. The person who has constructed those piles got changed. Now, as a new person, you are not aware exactly whether that uh, pile of that specified diameter and length is originally constructed in the field or not. 
So in such case, if you want to understand, okay, uh, what is the depth to which the file is constructed there? So if I want to understand, so I can go to the site, wherever I have my file on that particular file, I'm going to be conducting what is called as a file integrity test. We have got different ways of uh, carrying out that file integrity test. So depending on uh, the requirement, what you are looking at, the corresponding file integrity test, maybe uh, it can be what is called as a generating an echo in your file material, generating uh, by applying some uh, uh, sudden load, uh, small uh, intensity of load by transferring it onto your uh, file. We'll be trying to understand to what length your uh, waves are getting traveled through that uh, same type of file material and the time required for that uh, wave to travel through the material and bounce back to the receiver. So based on that, we'll try to understand what is going to be the length of that particular, what was that actual length of that file which was constructed. Okay, so that we'll be able to understand. So in some situation, it can also be used to determine the unknown length of your existing deep foundation. And the test is useful to find out your uh, structural soundness of the files. Apart from the length and uh, other aspects, as we said earlier, it is useful for uh, finding out the structural soundness of your files. So tests, that so-called pile integrity test, what we are talking about, for uh, testing the integrity of your pile, include what is called as a sonic test, or a seismic test, or an echo, or a vibration test and uh, so on so depending on uh, the type of equipment what is available we are going to be talking about those very, uh, various respective tests so test could be anything but ultimately you are looking at to determine what is called as the uh, integrity of that particular file just an outline is what we are going to be talking about about this particular uh, test so uh, what we do in this particular test is we are going to create a low level strain low level strain means small uh, deformation is what we are trying to induce into that pile by hitting that pile with a wooden hammer i repeat we are going to hit the pile head with a wooden hammer and uh, what we have to that pile we have got some acceleration sensors which are connected to your pile at different uh, positions i repeat we have some acceleration sensors which are connected to your pile at different positions and because of that whatever uh, load that you have transferred by hitting or by striking your pile head with a hammer so waves starts traveling through the pile surface and uh, the time required for the waves to uh, reach to the uh, sensors which are connected at different depths is what is going to be uh, identified and based on that time required okay you are going to be estimating the condition of the pile whether the material of uh, whether the properties of the pile is getting changed or whether you have got any vacuum uh, spaces available inside that uh, uh, pile cross section and so on so uh, what we do in this particular test is uh, this particular test is performed by creating a low level strain by lightly striking the pile head with a handheld hammer and we are going to be measuring the response at that particular time with the help of accelerometer sensors what are attached to your pile at different positions so those acceleration sensors are going to measure the response of that particular pile for that load what it is subjected to a small uh, uh, hitting what you have given uh, you have hit your uh, pile head with a small hammer so because of that small uh, effect what you have induced in your pile how the acceleration um, sensors are sensing the data of your acceleration data of the wave what is getting traveled through that pile material based on which we'll be trying to understand the condition of your pile we are not going into much details of this test but just to give you an idea like we are trying to talk about this particular test so what is the necessity of this uh, pile integrity test okay so the pile integrity test will be useful in uh, different ways let's say one of such case here the ultimate strength of a deep foundation Generally, whenever we are talking about a deep foundation, the ultimate strength what we are trying to talk about for a particular deep foundation should satisfy both what is called as the structural aspect of that foundation and geotechnical aspects of your foundation. Structural aspect means the load carrying capacity of the pile is so much enough that it uh, the pile is very strong enough in taking the loads what it is subjected to structurally wise it is safe but geotechnical aspect wise whether the amount of settlement what your pile is undergoing the amount of deflection what your pile is going to have, whether it is within the permissible limits or not both structurally it has to be safe and uh, geotechnical aspects wise also it has to be safe 
okay for the foundation what you have uh, particularly uh, designed uh, to meet that respective criteria so to understand whether that particular pile is going to meet that required criterion of what you have uh, designed it for so to understand that you can uh, depend on your pile integrity test whether the pile is satisfying your uh, requirement uh, um, according to which uh, for uh, whichever cases it has been designed so methods of installation of your drill shafts and uh, driven piles gives rise to concern among engineers regarding the structural integrity of your uh, shafts as the final position of the ground uh, sorry as the final position of the foundation lies beneath the ground surface which makes inspection difficult so what is going to happen is in the construction of these deep foundations if it is a shallow foundation as the foundation is constructed at a shallow depth below the ground so for constructing that shallow foundation we make an open pit excavation and we construct our shallow foundation so we are able to physically see okay to what depth the foundation is constructed what is the width of the foundation what is the depth of the foundation all those physical characteristics by physical appearance you will be able to understand the condition at least by uh, knowing okay at what depth what is the width what is the cross section how the reinforcement is placed all that you will have at least an idea but in the case of your deep foundation so as the methods of installation of the deep foundation can be by driven or by making a bore hole but ultimately let's say if it is by making a bore hole what we do uh, we make a bore hole of some required diameter till the required depth and then we go on to construct your uh, pile there by placing the reinforcement according to the required spacing and you will be tying those uh, vertical reinforcing bars with the stirrups and so on and you will be uh, placing your uh, concrete of your required grade and accordingly you will be properly compacting your concrete and ultimately in the process of curing it you will be attaining the maximum strength for that particular pile over the required period of time but this is as per your uh, design okay this steel grade uh, this grade of steel is used of this much diameter at this spacing tie up bars everything as per design you know what i should do what type of concrete i should use okay how it has to be compacted what is the method of compaction of that concrete everything you know but when it comes to practical aspect whether it is done in the similar way or not we do not know because as that pile is being constructed below the ground monitoring the condition of the construction of the pile is not going to be so easy so finally after the construction of the pile which is lying beneath the position of the ground surface carrying out the inspection of that particular pile becomes difficult understanding the condition of the pile by its physical appearance is not possible because the portion of the pile is below the ground so in such particular case of those structure which is there below the ground where you are not able to physically inspect the condition of that particular uh, structure or that particular uh, deep foundation so your pile integrity test is going to be helping us in knowing the condition of that particular pile and uh, this pile integrity test also helps and uh, helps us in detecting any potential dangers potential dangers in the sense you are uh, you thought of constructing your pile uh, as per your uh, design condition only but in the process of construction you might face various problems you might come across with a uh, lot of difficulties difficulties like you do not know what has happened you can you thought your construction was proper but however you might have some cracks which are getting developed uh, in the pile construction when your pile is driven with so much force into the ground there are some possibilities that your pile uh, at some location might have got cracked because of which the load carrying capacity of the pile comes down so i should i do not know my pile when it was uh, precasted it looks very good but when i have driven it into the ground there are some possibilities of getting cracks in the pile while driving it so whether your pile is very much as same as that of uh, the initial condition after placing it after driving it or not i do not know so for that i can uh, perform what is called as a pile integrity test which will be helping us in identifying such kind of cracks in identifying such kind of necked shaped cross sections so uh, we make a bore hole for constructing the pile but in the process of making the bore hole it's not uh, so comfortable to understand that whether the diameter of the pile what is getting formed is same throughout the depth of the pile whether we have got same uniform cross section throughout the depth of the pile it's not possible at some particular depth you might see a lesser cross sectional area available which 
is what we are calling it as a necking shaped cross section for your uh, pile so that we can understand from this pile integrity test and sometimes after making the bore hole when you start pouring the concrete into that bore hole so there is some chances that no soil from the adjacent bore hole might start uh, collapsing or uh, some uh, soil grains might be uh, some portion of the soil might be fall uh, falling into that uh, bore hole what you have made so in the process what is going to happen is the borehole which was supposed to be completely uh, filled with concrete now getting some portions at some locations is getting filled with your uh, soil you might have some soil inclusions into, into your uh, uh, concrete what you are placing there because of which the strength reduction in the pile is going to be seen and uh, you might have uh, some large white spaces honeycomb formations if your uh, compaction is not proper uh, properly done in that uh, concrete what you are placing in the borehole in the construction of that particular pile so to understand all these issues what you are expected to come across with this pile integrity test is going to be useful and this particular pile integrity test is said to be more economical because it's not that you are causing the damage to the pile when you are trying to test it okay small jerk or vibration is what you are trying to create in that pile to understand its condition so that's the reason we say this test is said to be economical where you can understand the condition of an individual pile or group of piles or total number of piles which you are going to be using in the construction there okay so can economically test many or all the piles whichever are there in your construction site with the help of this pile integrity test okay so with this we conclude that uh, our fourth unit is complete and uh, what we have in detail talked about in this particular complete fourth unit is we started talking about what is meant by uh, deep foundation particularly here pile foundation and uh, we went on to understand how to estimate the load carrying capacity of your individual pile subjected to compressive loading or individual pile subjected to uh, tensile loading and then we have talked about how to estimate your group capacity of your piles which are either floating piles R which are said to be your uh, pile draft foundation. So uh, how to estimate the ultimate uh, load carrying capacity of the pile group we have seen. And then subsequently we have also talked about how to estimate the amount of settlements that your uh, piles are uh, undergoing. Okay, whether it is your floating pile group or your uh, pile draft foundation. And then later on we started talking about uh, how to estimate the lateral load carrying capacity of the pile. And we have also seen the other uh, field tests based on which uh, the uh, pile condition can be understood, which is subjected to your lateral loading or tensile loading or maybe your compressive loading. And then we have also talked about what is called as your uh, pile integrity test. Okay. So this is all about your uh, fourth unit. In our next lecture, we'll start talking about your uh, fifth unit. They, which are nothing but some of those different types of uh, deep foundation like your uh, Kazon foundation is what we'll be touching upon and there are some other uh, topics what we'll be covering like copper dam underpinning and geosynthesis